Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. This is a Minolta Hymatic 7S2. This is originally my grandfather's camera. He gave this to me. And this is a camera I've been wanting to shoot with for quite some time, but there's pretty much been one thing that's holding me back from using this 35 millimeter camera. The rangefinder, which is essentially the part where you focus and compose through, has become pretty foggy just because of the age of this camera and the fact that it's been sitting around for so long just collecting moisture means that this isn't so clear anymore to look, compose, and focus through. So I thought today I would try and fix that. Now this Minolta is a pretty popular camera back when it was first released because of the fact that First of all, it's super compact, so the size of this thing for a 35 millimeter rangefinder is really small. And then there's also this lens, which has a leaf shutter. It's really sharp, and it's a 40 millimeter lens. So just those two things alone made this such a popular camera. And those are also the reasons I want to shoot with it now. Even though the lens is fixed, the fact that this camera is fully manual with aperture and shutter speed on the lens itself means that it's really capable. Today I thought it'd be fun to make a little vlog and try and take this thing apart and fix that foggy rangefinder because it is a really common issue that a lot of people have. Now this isn't going to be a tutorial, I'm not a professional at this, I've never done this before, but I thought I'd just bring you along on my first time opening one of these and trying to fix it. Maybe it's interesting to see what this thing looks like inside. So I just want to make this video, show you that it's possible to fix up old cameras like this one yourself. And even if you're not interested in doing this yourself, it's just important to know that these things are super repairable. And the fact that they don't make these anymore and they probably will never make them again means that we should take care of the old ones because there's obviously a limited stock of these. So I think it's going to become more and more valuable as time goes on to be able to fix these things. And today I'm going to try my hand at that. So this should be really fun. I think we'll just get right into it. So I'm going to start taking this thing apart and hopefully improve it a little bit, make it a little bit more enjoyable to use. And this should be fun to just tear into one of these, see what it looks like underneath. The things you'll need are essentially a set of small screwdrivers. The screws on these things are super small and the last thing you want to do is strip them out and then you won't be able to remove them. So investing in something like this is going to save you a lot of frustration. You will also need some alcohol. I'm using this hand sanitizer that I bought from a local distillery. The only important thing you need to look for is that the alcohol content is above 80%. So this has that. It should be good for cleaning and it should dry off the glass really quick. The last thing I've got are some Q-tips. Uh, these will basically be used to swab the alcohol very precisely on the pieces of glass that we're trying to clean. So essentially what I want to do is clean the rangefinder piece right here. So what I'm going to be doing is removing this top section of metal and that should allow me to get to that rangefinder. I'm pretty sure this just unscrews like that. So that looks pretty good and now this just comes off. So now I'm going to try to take off the shutter button and I think this kind of just twists off. The last thing to get off is the film rewind switch and I've tried kind of pulling this all kinds of ways. So I think what you have to do to remove this rewind switch is basically hold this pin in here like that and then this can twist off. So now what I'll do is take this screwdriver and just start taking apart all these little screws. That screw is absolutely tiny. So small, you definitely don't want to lose that. So that is the last one. And let's see if this will... Oh wow, that's actually easier than I expected. Okay, so this case is connected here. So just opening this up now, I can see that somebody has definitely worked on this camera in the past. There's kind of some heat shrink tubing there that shouldn't be there. So that's pretty interesting, but this is just a nice little close up look. That's literally just glued down. So I had this little cover piece in front of the rangefinder. So now we can take a look at the mechanism inside here that's pretty much responsible for all the focusing. 
Now it's time to pour one out. Gonna just pour a little bit in this cup. Oh, this smells so bad. From what I've heard, you wanna kinda clean the front and rear elements of the rangefinder. You do not wanna clean this diagonal piece because it will rub off the actual material that makes the rangefinder patch work. So I'm gonna try my best to just clean this front part and this back part. This is so stressful. So it's looking pretty good at this point. I had kind of one challenging thing where I had to get a piece of cotton and put it in between these two pieces of glass right there because that's where a lot of dirt was. The main challenge is reassembling this. Not the cleanest tape job, but that should definitely hold. One thing you don't want to have to do here is force things back into place. So I'm putting this back as gently as possible. That's the shutter button. Then I'm gonna put the screws back in. Shutter still fires, the camera still works. That was my biggest fear. So I would say that was pretty successful overall. Just the quality of this thing before and after is so much clearer and I can see the aperture readout on the side. So. Oh. oh my God, there it is, always while I'm filming. This just came in while I was filming this. I'll open this at the end. And it's a new camera. Like I said, I'm not a professional at this. This is my first time and I think it was successful. If you are afraid to do this, there are amazing places that you can send your cameras out to. But overall, I would just encourage that you fix old cameras like this rather than just replacing them. So I hope that was interesting. I'm gonna open up my new camera. This was overnighted to me, which FedEx overnight shipping will always blow my mind. I don't understand how that works. Oh, look at this amazing packaging. Uh, this was sent to me by another photographer, Chris Malloy. I bought this off of him and he overnighted this to me. So thank you so much for that. Okay, well, I can tell you it is not a Roken on lens. Oh my God, what a sweetheart. Look at this, threw in some expired film. Thank you, Chris. 220, I've never shot 220 film before. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. So I should explain, I've been wanting one of these for probably over a year at this point, ever since I really shot a ton of photos with Corey's Mamiya 7. This is a camera that I've wanted for ages and I've just been looking for the right one. I've had some bad experiences with some eBay purchases in the past. So this one came from Chris Malloy on Instagram. He's an incredible photographer. I know that he knows what he's talking about when it comes to cameras, so I felt pretty comfortable buying this one off of him. So I'll definitely do a full video on this thing soon as well as my thoughts kind of owning it now because I've never owned one of these in the past but it has been pretty much a dream camera. Finally, I do wanna say thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an incredible online learning community with thousands of classes covering dozens of topics ranging from things like graphic design to photography. I've personally really enjoyed Andre Wagner's course on Skillshare because he shows his whole photography process, making black and white images out on the street to coming home and developing them and printing them. So why not learn something new this year with Skillshare. You can hit the link in my description for a two month free trial of Skillshare. That's for the first 1000 people. Thank you so much to them for supporting the channel. And finally, I want to say thank you to you for watching. If you're not subscribed, I upload pretty much every week here. So you can do that down below. That's it for now. Peace. <music>